I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation Swampanomics videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. This week, if you think the U.S. economy is in a recession, you better not tell the media. According to a new Guardian-Harris survey, 56% of respondents believe the U.S. is in a recession, and 56% think President Joe Biden is responsible for what they view as an economic downturn. In addition, 49% think the S&P 500 index is down for the year, and 49% say the unemployment rate is at a 50-year high. Of course, these results are incorrect. The United States is not in a recession, as it is defined by two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth, the S&P 500 is flirting with record highs, and the jobless rate, no matter how terrible the methodology is, is at a 50-year low. The typical individual cannot be blamed for thinking these things, however. People concentrate on their own economic climates. The cost of living is rocketing, real wage growth has been negative, and a dollar buys a nickel's worth, as the great Howard Beale told viewers in Network. But the real story in all of this is how the media are responding to the latest polling data. The establishment press is in full defense mode because potential voters are sour on the economy and will inevitably blame President Joe Biden as a polling data has suggested for the last three years. NBC News reported, quote, Most Americans falsely think the U.S. is in a recession, poll shows. The Guardian told readers, Majority of Americans wrongly believe U.S. is in recession. The Hill wrote in its headline, Nearly three in five incorrectly believe U.S. is in economic recession. For months, news outlets have been beating the drum that the public, be it consumers or business owners, should not be so pessimistic about the economy because the gross domestic product expanded by 1.6% in the first quarter. This has been the same message over and over again. The data do not justify the weak sentiment. But what do the numbers suggest? The University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index is at a two-year low. The Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index slumped in April. The National Federation of Independent Businesses Small Business Optimism Index was below the 50-year average for the 28th straight month in April. Red Balloon Public Square's May Freedom Economy Index showed small businesses are in, quote, survival mode. Despite what the punditry class insisted heading into this current inflationary climate, mainly that inflation only hurts the rich, a rocketing cost of living is hurting the poor and middle class. Everything has gone up in price. When surveys suggest that fast food is now a luxury item, you know the economy is paralyzed in a bizarre place. 9% but remember, President Biden said in two separate interviews, one with CNN and one with Yahoo Finance, that inflation was 9% when he arrived to the White House. We have the strongest economy in the world. Let me say it again, in the world. Although GDP last week was far short of expectations. Oh, it wasn't. Look, GDP is still growing. Look at the response of the markets. Overwhelmingly positive. And one of the reasons why people feel good about it not being as strong as it was before is they believe that the Fed's going to respond. They hope they're going to get a rate cut. Yeah. Well, so, but I mean, no president's had the run we've had in terms of creating jobs and bringing down inflation. It was 9% when I came to office. Yes, the GDP is expanding and unemployment is below 4%. Though both gauges are awful depictions of the current economic landscape. But inflation distorts everything and makes everyone miserable. Households and small businesses can barely keep their heads above water. For example, Federal Reserve data show that real inflation adjusted household wealth has increased by just 0.7% since January 2021. Even as property values soar, stocks hit record highs, and incomes jump, it's not working. Another component in this saga is how the press responded to the technical recession that occurred Personnel in the first half of 2022. We're not in recession. The United States slipped into a technical recession after contracting 2% in the first quarter of 2022 and 0.6% in the second quarter. 
However, the media did everything they could to parrot the White House's denial of messaging and convince the public that the conventional definition that everyone learned in Econ 101 or discovered in previous recessionary environments along the way was wrong. Here are some of the fine reporting examples from the esteemed members of the press. Quote, even with the economy recording a second straight quarter of negative GDP, many economists do not regard it as constituting a recession, the Associated Press told readers. The American economy didn't get the memo that it's supposed to already be in a recession, CNN quipped. While two consecutive quarters of negative growth is often considered a recession, it's not an official definition reported NPR in July 2022. Many private economists agree that the United States is not in a recession, yet, said Reuters. But what is comical is that the mainstream media outlets have adhered to this traditional definition. Here is CNN in June 2020. Normally, economists define a recession as consecutive quarters of negative growth. Here is MarketWatch. A recession is typically defined as two straight quarters of negative GDP. Here is CNBC earlier in May when discussing the Guardian-Harris data. A recession is an extended period of economic decline, usually designated when GDP has declined for two or more consecutive fiscal quarters. Now, perhaps the definition depends on who is sitting inside the White House. If the public is told that two straight quarters of negative growth meet the bar of a recession under a Republican president, but not a recession under a Democratic president, it is understandable why the average person who does not follow this stuff closely might have a different definition. All of it conjures up the great quote, the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swamp Economics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com and be sure to check out my previous Swamp Economics TV videos and interviews. Thank you. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp.